are you? Good, Beth. How are you? Well, thanks. Um, I watched Sleeping Dogs the other day. Absolutely loved it. So first off, thank you for making it. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you liked it. Of course. Um, so this is your feature film directorial debut, correct? How does yes, it feel that it's done and people are going to see it? Uh, it's exciting and it's also terrifying, uh, of course, um, because you never know, um, you know, you never know how things are going to be received, but I'm really proud of the movie. Um, it was hard fought and kind of a heavy lift in the making. Um, so, you know, I think, um, I, I think as an artist, you always look back on your work and you see the warts that maybe other people aren't even aware they're they're not aware that they even exist um so i think that's you know part of it i think they say as um other director friends of mine have told me that if i haven't gotten to this point and don't totally hate the film there's something wrong with me um so oh. you know um so you're a writer with a career that has lasted over 20 years um what brought you into the the director's chair uh well i actually always wanted to direct um and writing kind of became the um initially the means to that end when i moved to los angeles and then um i kind of fell in love with writing um and there were a handful of things over the years that uh, I was attached to direct that for one reason or another didn't ultimately end up getting made. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a sort of a sudden choice born from this piece of material. Uh, it kind of felt though that um, this was a great piece of material with which to, to do that first film on because it was relatively contained. Um, had a really compelling sort of central narrative to it um really a complex protagonist um so there was a lot to a lot to really sink your teeth into without it being overwhelming i would agree with that for sure <laughs> there's a lot to it um so this is ultimately an adaptation of the novel the book of mirrors um what was it like adapting that to film? Uh, it was a different kind of adaptation than other things I've adapted in that I think the thing that endures from the book to film is um, thematics around sort of memory being very much kind of a, a point of view. Um, and, um, you know, the, the central murder mystery um also was something that translated but the lens through which we looked at the story and the characters whose eyes we were going through the story through that's kind of different from the book the book exists in kind of uh three silos three different characters are kind of sort of carrying the torch and then passing it on to the next in the book a New York lit agent receives a manuscript from Richard Finn recounting events from 20 years ago that made him realize that perhaps the person who was responsible or held responsible for killing Joseph Weider isn't in fact the person. And then that character passes off their knowledge to an investigative journalist who had, invest who had investigated, who'd written about it 20 years ago. And it plays to a certain place. And then that character sort of passes off their findings to the homicide detective, Roy Freeman, a man who has early onset Alzheimer's, who 20 years ago investigated the case and was responsible for putting the ban on death row. Um, when we read it, we sort of saw you couldn't really translate what was in the book as is to, to film because it didn't actually present a singular protagonist with a journey. Um, and felt like in a story about memory, this character who existed in the third installment of the novel, um, Roy Freeman, who's a guy who's struggling with um, memory of his own, felt like the right way to kind of lens this story that was very much about memory because it gave him, it inherently gave him an arc. 
Um, so we basically took all the content of the first two thirds of the novel and sort of reframed it, eliminated things, um, added things, um, a twist that was not in the book, um, you know, to the film. Um, so it was a different kind of adaptation, uh, but you just kind of keep coming back to theme and character. Um, it's sort of your guiding light. That's really interesting. I haven't read the book, but I think I have to now. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Um, and Russell Crowe plays uh, the spectacular Roy Freeman. Um, what was it about him that made him perfect for this role? Um, I think, well, aside from Russell just being an inherently gifted actor, um, I think a, a character who's sort of bereft of memory comes with a very complex kind of humanity to them. And I don't think that there's anybody better at playing complex characters with complex humanity than Russell. Um, I think there is, um, he's a, He's a subtle actor. Um, there's uh, a quietness, um, but still powerful way with which he captures emotion and sort of translates that. Um, he acts within the within the film frame in a way that I've never seen before. Uh, he's acutely aware of of camera. Um, so he will ask you on the day, like when you're shooting a scene, what, what's the lens left, the lens length on that one? What's the lens length on that one? Because he knows exactly what space he's acting in. So he's not thinking about acting anywhere, but what he has to do in the frame. So it's why like all like the close work on his eyes and all that stuff is so incredible um, because he just kind of concentrates everything that he's doing just within the frame. That's really interesting. I never thought of, I guess, explaining acting like in that, that way. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, look, there's some actors like Daniel Day Lewis who are method actors who their whole body whether you see their whole body in the frame or not, their whole body is, you know, is acting. Yeah. Well, but that's cool. it was really interesting. Um, and the title is Sleeping Dogs. Can you explain the significance of that along with the phrase like let sleeping dogs lie? Yeah, I mean, um, so I think the origin of the phrase is that you um you don't bother a dog who's sleeping because you don't know what you might get right if you do um, it's unpredictable um and i think um the title really came from what happens at the end of the movie um you know it's very much um story of a man who feels uh, lost isolated alone confused by nature of um his lack of memory and, you know, memory is what gives us context for who we are. And without that, um, it's hard to know our place in the world. Um, and so in an effort to reconnect, he wants to get his memory back. But as he goes along the journey, when he gets to the end of it, he kind of wishes that he just kind of left it all alone because now he's forced to live with what he's learned. Um, so that's kind of where the title came from. That makes sense for sure. Um, all right. Um, just one last question of very broad. Um, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you would really like to say in regard to sleeping dogs? Oh, I just feel really grateful that I got the opportunity to make the movie with such a talented group of um, craftspeople and actors. Um, it was a really incredible experience and I hope people enjoy the film. <laughs>